everyone how the devil are you it's friday it's rolled around once again hasn't it um i've been opening the video the last few weeks by saying uh, this it's friday the sun is shining but it's uh, it's not here today it's a uh, uh, well it's absolutely bucketing down outside nevertheless i plan on getting wet from the inside out tonight anyway cheers everyone Ah, right. Well, I, I just want to start off the, the live stream this evening by uh, saying thank you to um, everyone who left such kind comments on my uh, little video that I put out earlier today, the, the one I did this morning. Um, you know, it was, uh, well, it, it was just nice of you all to be so kind about it. And... Um, you know, uh, it's it, it seems with, with recent events or events of yesterday, it seems um, you know a little bit trivial, frankly, doesn't it, to be talking about pedals and plectrums and guitar strings and stuff. But you know, we will soldier on. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with that in mind, let's have a look and see who we've got in. Uh, this evening, um, or this afternoon, or this whatever time it is, well, uh, wherever you are. I see we've got Robster Boy in first in. Congratulations, Robster. Um, then Edwin Toonan and Grandpa Joe. Um, Johnny H is there, so is Wilson Jones and Danny Hancock. Uh, Johnny Random's there, and Ryan Byrne and Bridget Pollock. Ian Clark is there, so is Paul Trainer. And who else we got? Uh, Peter Collins and Balder's in. Nice to see you there, Rob. Um, who else is uh, is there? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Cal B and the Rock or Catherine. So is Anton and Vincent Brennan and Phil Phil. Uh, David Evans is there and so is John Ross and Michael Palmer. Um, talking about his new Joyo practice amp. Um, Jeff C is there, and who else we got? Ray James and Cowus Music. And scrolling down, we've got Simon M and Stephen Tatton uh, in the chat as well. So is Jimmy James and Steve Muskie. And who else we got? Who else we got? Let's have a look. Dr. Gomez is there, and uh, Dave Lewis is in. Nice to see you in, Dave. Quite the regular. Uh, there's Deco Dude and 60s Man. And we've got Chris Ottwell and Dave Pegg and Gordo Canuck and James Hunt, as well as Mark Kerno and uh, Brad Matthews. Pablo Hank is in and Chip Young and Jimmy James. Have, you already, have I already said you, Jimmy? I apologise if I have. Uh, then there's Peter S and Steve Entwistle uh, bringing up the rear. Then Thomas Mulvaney. We've got uh, Thomas featuring in a video that's going to be coming out beginning the next month. Um, I think you're going to like that one. Uh, more details to follow. Uh, then, who else we got? James White is there, and so is Nancy Davis and Lawrence Hastings. Savvy64, Malcolm Spillett, Jim Cotter, and who else we got? Uh, Dudley Squat and Patrick Becker, and John Mack is there. Finn Auden Harstad, we've got you in as well, mate. Fender Bender, Colin Falcon, nice to see you in, mate. Um, Scrolling down, uh, I think we've got William Forrest in there and Steve Lamb and Stuart Young and Bass at Night. Cornucopia is in, so is uh, PFY Guitars, Dennis Flock, John Channing, Mike Hurley, the Essex Cat, Brad Dowell and Cape Cod Dog. And let's have a look, see who we've got him. Randy Upchurch, Bruce... Uh, R Rivlinski, I do apologise um, if I pronounce that badly, but uh, that's uh, blame my uh, failing eyesight. Uh, Marvelous bloke is in. So is Jet Set ninety five and Mike Gowan. Well, sorry, Mark Gowans. Um, and scrolling down, we've got reeled in fifty eight Strat Boy nine nine nine. Uh, Phil B and uh, Pete Moulton, Graham Campbell. And old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. Well, thank you once again. Uh, just looking at the little um, kind of stat counter in the corner of my screen here, uh, I see there's 153 of you who have uh, come to join me for a beer this uh, rather miserable dreek, as my mother-in-law would call it. Dreek is the Scottish word for 
wet and damp and miserable. Um, uh, this is a rather dreek uh, Friday um, afternoon or evening or whatever time it is. Um, but it's five o'clock here in Redcar. Um, yes, so uh, let's get all of the housekeeping out of the way. Um, I usually at this point, uh, before I forget, run down what videos are coming up on the channel this week. And uh, no Saturday video uh, this week, uh, but Sunday, as usual, we will be looking at the guitar that I unboxed uh, yesterday, that Faisley Sunset Tempest, that um, sort of P90 Telecaster uh, style guitar. Lovely guitar, and it scrubs up rather well in the, in a mix, as a, as you can hear on Sunday. Um, quite t when I do these uh, bits of music, um, some of them I actually think, you know what? Yeah, that's just a throwaway demo. That that'll do. It just demonstrates the guitar, and you know, it's ninety seconds or two minutes of of just what the guitar sounds like. But other ones, uh, other little demo tracks that I do, I end up thinking. I should really develop that into a full sort of four or five minute track. And uh, that Fazley or Faisley uh, Sunset Tempest uh, guitar is very much in the latter category. It's a, it's a tune that if I ever do get around to putting another album together, it will be um, probably the basis of one of the tunes on the album. So that is uh, something to look forward to on Sunday. Great little demo of that uh, Faisley Sunset Tempest guitar. Then on Monday, we are looking, as is the custom, at um, a classic solo. Um, so... Picture this, probably the most unconventional guitar player you've ever seen. Um, not in the style of music that he plays because that he played, because sadly he's no longer with us, but a guitarist who played in a massively unconventional way. Um, and um, was it featured in a certain Patrick Swayze movie from the late 80s. So some people are already kind of joining the dots there and the cogs are turning. But it's one of his solos that we're looking at. Anybody got any uh, any uh, guesses or, you know, um, you know, deductions they want to share in the chat, please feel free. I'll be letting the cat out the bag later. Then uh, Tuesday's video, uh, as usual, it is a top five. I never seem to run out of ideas for these top five videos because... Um, as my missus tells me, I'm, you, you know, I'm a bloke, and blokes love making lists of things. Um, so uh, the Tuesday video is, again, the top five, and it's the five pieces of gear that at some point or other I really, really, really wanted to own, but never quite got round to owning them either. At the time I wanted them, I was... Uh, I wasn't able to afford them or, you know, kind of, you know, my attention got diverted elsewhere or whatever. Uh, but, um, you know, five pieces of gear that I never, I really enjoyed researching that video and kind of having a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Uh, then on Wednesday, um, it's the first of the uh, sort of viewer suggested, uh, you know, kind of questions and, you know, kind of, well, viewer suggested content, basically, uh, videos that I'm going to be putting out on a Wednesday. You may recall a couple of weeks ago in the live stream, um, I said I was going to do this um, viewer generated sort of stuff. And, um, well, somebody said, why not do a video on how to teach guitar? Now, I've already done sort of a video like that a couple of years ago, I think it was now, or maybe certainly over a year ago, and it was like, you know, five things I've learned in my time as a guitar teacher, it was, it was that sort of format of video, but this is a little bit different, it's, um, you know, basically how I structure a guitar lesson, what elements it needs to have, and what order you do stuff in, in a lesson, uh, rather than just uh, kind of spewing forth a lot of information at the student saying, right, now, now you know, go away and do it. Uh, no, the, the, it's it's basically how to structure a lesson. So if you're thinking about, you know, putting an ad on Facebook or in your local paper or something, uh, offering your services as a guitar tutor, then that might be worth uh, watching. Uh, then on Thursday, the Thursday video is um, a little bit of a, I can't remember if there's an unboxing part of that video. I don't think there is, but it's uh, just checking out some new gear. You will uh, no doubt recall, this guitar um this rather fantastic Faisley guitar that is now mine um well it now sports a new set of pickups tone rider pickups no less i've heard so much 
um, good stuff about Tone Rider pickups and never got around to trying them out because you you know what it's like you you have your favourite brands of pickups like for me it's Vanson and I guess these days Iron Gear as well um, and you just tend to go with with the devil you know but um, I've um, I, I've decided to uh, go and check out Tone Rider pickups and uh, you can find out what I think of them on uh, Thursday so that is. Uh, that what's coming up on the channel this week excuse me i'm just going to go and lubricate uh, my uh, vocal cords uh, uh, phil b's asking a question there how do you tell your guitar teacher of three years that you don't want any more lessons well um just say um I don't want any more lessons, basically. Um, and I see a few people are uh, um, mentioning the uh, the guitarist that I'm dealing with on uh, Monday. Yes, indeed. Oh, so you've got Dan in from Scott Guitars. Um, yes, Jeff Healy is uh, the, uh, the guitarist we're looking at on Monday. Um, and we're looking at... I mean, I classic example of the difficult second album uh with jeff healy um that first album see the light was just i, I love that album i still do uh, apart from that schmaltzy ballad about halfway through um i always end up skipping that one angel eyes i think it's called i always end up skipping past that because it's a bit cheesy and naff isn't it um but um yeah that that whole album apart from that one song i absolutely love but the second album, Hell to Pay, I really, really, really tried tried my hardest to love that album, but I never quite got there. Good version of While My Guitar Gently Weeps on it, though, it has to be said. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're doing something off the first album, uh, a song called I Need to Be Loved, uh, which is um, one of the stronger tracks on on that album, I think. Uh, not that there's any weak tracks, well, apart from the, the one I mentioned, uh, that, that horrible power ballad. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're looking at, I need to be loved. Um, Paul train is saying, uh, saw Jeff Healy when, when he, when I first toured the UK, um, when is Blondie making an appearance? Um, well, if you saw the video earlier on today, she was in that. There she is. <laughs> There's the obligatory gratuitous shot of Blondie. Does every time I look at that top in, uh, on the screen there doesn't it just look absolutely gorgeous look at the movement in that in that maple there dan from scott guitars you are an absolute artist and a genius mate um if you want to own that guitar then go and check out uh, dan's um new website uh the old website uh, is basically, I don't know what happened to it, but Dan just uh, emailed me a link to the new one today. Uh, it's www.scott, with two Ts, scottguitars, all one word, .co.uk. Go and check it out and go and look at some of the wonderful, wonderful guitars that Dan has uh, built on that uh, on that. Um, you know, in, in his uh, workshop there on, on the site. Um God or Canuck is saying, more importantly, when is the puppy making an appearance? The thing is, he goes for a walk, usually about, oh, I take him for a walk, rather, he doesn't go on his own, um, uh, usually about two, between two two o'clock and three o'clock, and getting good and tired, so he's, um, so we get some peace and quiet, and uh, you, know, you ever heard the expression, let sleeping dogs lie? Never, never has that been more um true than it is in the robson household at the moment because if you wake the kraken dme there is um you know it's it's a it can be a bit of a struggle getting him to settle down so i'm not going to go and wake him up i promise i will feature him in a video or something at some point in the future it's about time i give you another little um trip around red car at some point like i did that 18 months or so ago so no doubt he will be in that video um uh, Uh, Dave Pegg is asking, Hi John, how do you teach guitar when, like me, one plays by ear? Um, 
Well, I teach ballet, basically. I mean, th there are certain things that you need uh, to, to be sort of conversant with, you know, in order to for the for the sort of conveyance of information from one person to the other to uh, run smoothly. Things like if you can read tab and if you can read chord diagrams. Um, but anybody that has guitar lessons off me knows that there's always lots of audio demonstrations and sometimes, you know, video demonstrations of me playing the stuff and, you know, backing tracks to play along with. It, it's not, you know, it, it's not like when I'm pointing at a musical score and saying, no, play it like this. Uh, play, that's that's a, a dotted semiquaver in the third bar or anything. I'm, no, that's not how I teach. Um, uh, what's that, Boulder? Let's have a look. Um, has anyone else got the 2020 Epiphone Les Paul standard 50s and 60s or slash models? models slash models I beg your pardon i'm with colin guitarist is on this excellent value rich biscoff plays some fantastic blues rock on his 50s gold top um no um but it's oh brad matthews thank you thank you under present circumstances thanks for doing the show tonight john a sad day but life must go on have a drink on me you are a gentleman and a scholar brad thank you very much i did I'll be honest with you. Um, I mean, it's about time, I suppose, we address the elephant in the room. Um, you know, I mean, she was 96 years old and, you know, no one lives forever. But she's been just such a constant in everybody's lives that you just kind of, you just, that, that bit of knowledge that, you know, the, the, the day will come, you just kind of park that and you don't think about it because... You know, she she's just, as I say, been such a constant in everybody's life. She's she was older than pretty much everyone in the country, so it's hard to find anybody who doesn't remember, who doesn't kind of, who remembers a time before her. And, um, yeah, it's it it it, it certainly took the wind out of my sails. It's it's a little bit like, um. When I when Eddie Van Halen passed away, I was never that big a Van Halen fan. But it, 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 as I said at the time, that the, the landscape of electric guitar has has changed um, instantly and you know irrevocably. And whilst it's a, a, you know a guitar player is not the same as our monarch, but it is like that. You know, it's something that was a constant in 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 life, something that was or someone that was there. And was just a part of, you know, the, the background, uh, part of the landscape is is now lo no longer there, and the world looks and feels a very, very, very different place. So, with that in mind, um, I'm just about to uh, finish this. If everybody would like to uh, charge their glasses. And those of you who are um, of the persuasion to do so, would you please all join me in raising a glass to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, may she rest in peace. God save King Charles. And whilst I know there are people who are not monarchists, and I respect that, it's a respectable position to have, I would say this. Um, if there was anybody else who you didn't particularly like, or maybe you disagreed with what they stood for, would you pick the moment that that person had lost their mother or their grandmother or their great-grandmother to publicly air your disagreement with them? So I think now is not the time for airing debates of that nature. And that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Um, <clears throat> and who? Let's see what else we've got. Um, Uh, 
Uh, uh, yeah, Dave, uh, the Queen Mum was, um, I think she was 101 when the, when, when, when the Queen Mum, uh, passed, wasn't she? Or was it? Because I think she was, she was born in 1900. So she was, I always remember she was as old as a century. Um, you know, and, uh, I think it was, so I think she was died in 2001. Um, so I think that made her 101, but it's a good innings, isn't it? Um, and, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, hey, thank you so many for so many people for, um, joining me in, in that toast there. Um, it's, it's really nice of you to do so. Um, Queen Mum was 102. Uh, Chip Young is, uh, let's put you up on the screen there, Chip. Uh, any experience of the four-way mod, mod and a P90 in the neck? Um, I do like the four-way mod on a Telecaster. Um, and I have I was thinking about doing it on this guitar, actually. Um, the only reason I didn't was because the place, it's got a whole new wiring loom in as well, all CTS pots and um Oak Grigsby switch and stuff. The only reason I didn't put the four-way mod in this is because the pre-wired loom that has the four-way mod was out of stock when I was uh, ordering. So that's why uh, it hasn't got in. But I do like the four-way mod. With a P90 in the neck, it's going to be an absolute beast of a of a sound on that uh, on that sort of series connection, isn't it? Um, but, um, no, I don't have any experience. I have experience of a P90 in the neck and experience of the four way mod, but not together is the short answer. Um, uh, okay. Let's see what else has been going on in the chat. And, uh, Uh, oh, Pablo Hank is saying Wolfgang Van Halen, the Taylor, Taylor Hawkins tribute. Wow. Yeah, I didn't see, I haven't seen that, but I did see the, the video Rick Beato put up, put up about it. And, um, God, the lad can play, can't he? You know, the apple didn't fall far from the tree there, did it? Um, you know, uh, he's, um, he's certainly got the chops and, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I knew that, um, Wolfgang was, uh, he took Michael Anthony's place in, in Van Halen, didn't he? When was Michael Anthony sacked or was he, or did he, did he quit? I don't know. I think it's one of those, uh, it depends who you ask kind of things, isn't it? Um, but, um, you know, I didn't realize he was a, as young as he was when he took, uh, took over the bass role in, uh, Van Halen. According to Rick Beato, he was like 15. Uh, when he started playing bass in, let's face it, one of the biggest rock bands in the world. Um, you know, I mean, nepotism is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Uh, but you know, it, it, obviously he was he was um, there on merit. Um, just, it, it's it's like that uh, Peter Green concert that was up. When was that? About eighteen months ago. Um, that Peter Green tribute concert with Kirk Hammett playing the the, the Gary Moore, Peter Green, Les Paul, and stuff. I just wish that that was available, you know, as a, as a download or on streaming or as a DVD or something like that. And this Taylor Hawkins concert as well. Um, you know, and it's, do you remember when this kind of thing used to be on TV? I mean, probably the obvious example would have been, um, you know, the, the Freddie Mercury tribute concert. Um, you know, the TV networks were all over that, but not that I watch a lot of TV, it has to be said. But from what TV I have watched and, you know, what news bulletins I've seen and stuff, it's been virtually non-existent. It's, you wouldn't have known that there was this big thing going off. Was it Wembley Stadium? You just wouldn't have known that there was anything happening. And it's like, you know, come on. Why, is the t why isn't TV covering this? Um, Uh, Dr. Gomez is saying, Andy Fraser was only 15 when he made the first free album. Another incredible musician. Uh, oh, Scott Guitars. Uh, Dan is saying, Taylor Hawkins' concert was on Channel 5 at midnight. Really. Do you remember when they used to cover that sort of thing live? Um, 
Oh, and Paramount also showed it, says Pablo Hank. Um, I shall have to have it. We, we've got like a bunch of streaming services on um, on our TV downstairs, so I shall have to have a dig around in there and uh, and see if if anybody's uh, covering it. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh yes, uh, now this is a guitar that hopefully I will be uh, doing a review of at some point. Um, just to put you in the picture, one of my students, a chap, funnily enough, called Dan. Uh, made uh, got in touch with Dan from Scott Guitars to um, get a George Harrison Rosewood Telecaster built. And this is Dan talking about it here. The George Harrison Tele I've just made had a five-way switch um, without a phase on a push-pull. Monty's 68 pickups and wiring room sounded lovely. Yeah, um, if, if my student called Dan gets in touch at some point, he said uh, when, he, when he ordered the guitar that he'd be... Um, dropping it round for for me to do a video with some uh, now it's uh, now it's complete it's it's going to be um hopefully making an appearance in on you know in these uh, in these very hallowed halls here um Brad Matthews is saying there will be stuff on the Taylor Hawkins tribute concert on YouTube as well that I've seen a bunch of them but it's all just kind of shaky phone footage with kind of phone quality audio the, uh, the bits and pieces I've seen, unfortunately. Um, uh, let's have a look. Oh, Boulder seeing off to see Frampton in November. Anyone else going? Um, yes, I, I, I knew he was touring. This is going to be his farewell tour. I've seen the adverts for it. Um, so, you know, you know, get while the getting's good, I suppose. Um, let's have a look. Um where are we? Uh, Pete Moulton is uh, Moulton. I beg your pardon. Is saying I have a modified Pacifica with Telebridge and a Strat neck, uh, but using part part out of face can get a good Strat tone mix. Good Strat mix tone. Yeah, Colin Falcon, uh, another regular. Uh, he's in the chat tonight, I believe. Um, is um, has a few, well has I was going to say a few I would <laughs> I would say a shed load of uh, modded Telecaster style guitars and um, one of the ones that he loaned me to do a review on uh, a little while back was um, one that had like a that sort of part out of phase sound which gives you like a a Strat style sound um, that I think I also reviewed um, a Jerry Donahue. Uh, signature model guitar that that had the same kind of mod going on on it uh, as well, which was um, a rather nice guitar. Uh, Michael Broadhead is saying, "What was your strap lock technique in the clubs, John? Ever had a guitar fall to the floor with that sickening crash? Um, not from me, but." Um, one of the roadies once in a band I was in did, he was um, fixing something up on, on one of the lighting stands and um, the, uh, and I heard this almighty crash coming from the, from the, the stage and he, he'd knocked me uh, strat over. Um, but it was, it was fine. But talking about uh, my strap lock technique, let's have a look at Blondie again. Um, if you can see, I use these things here. These the, the like little kind of uh, rubber washers that keep your strap absolutely bulletproof, secure. Cheapest way of locking a strap on, and I think the most reliable. Those, those sort of click-on spring-loaded ones. Um, you know, I've just never been fond of those because it always seems like it's it's another thing to go wrong. And I have heard people say that um, they've had disasters with those where you know it's they, they basically fail uh but this absolutely bulletproof uh it just it holds the strap on securely and the other great thing about this is that you know that kind of awkward thing where your strap does a full revolution around the strap button and ends up twisted it just won't do that with this so your strap never gets twisted either um and Oh, Mark Kerno, congratulations, mate. I'm getting married, married tomorrow, guys. Wish me luck. The best of luck to you, mate. Uh, may you have many happy years together. Um, good for you, mate. 
I hope the weather. I hope the, the weather holds out for you. Um, and uh, yeah, good for you. Have a great day, mate. Um, uh, Colin Falcon is saying, "What's that?" Uh, um, I have. Uh, I even have that five-way mod in one of my HH tellies. It sounds interesting. I should, I should imagine it does. Did you have to change the pots on that? Did you have to, did you have to go up to, like, was it 500k pots you need for humbuckers, or did you just stick with the uh, the 250s? Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Just scrolling through the chat. Uh, Johnny Random seems to be of the same persuasion as me. I have strap locks and rubber washers. The rubber is better because it's quieter. I've never noticed strap locks making noise. Um, but, um, you know, each to their own. Uh, Chip Young's saying, anyone heard from Aussie? Um, he's rebranded himself as, uh, I think, as a 21st century boy now, and he, he, he crops up in the comments on a bunch of my videos. But um, I think, didn't somebody say that he was uh, working regular on a Friday evening now, so he, he can't uh, make the uh, live stream? Um, <laughs> uh, Mark Kerno saying, thanks guys, sorry John, that kiss emoji was supposed to be a smiley face. Mate, it doesn't matter, I couldn't tell what it was anyway, my eyes, um, I'm going to have to go and get a new pair of glasses. The reason why I put so many comments up on screen is because it, <laughs> it increases the size of the font, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, and therefore makes it um, easier for my uh, gummy old eyes to, uh, to read. Um, Oh, Craig's in. How are you, Craig? Craig Stamen. Um, uh, got stuck at work. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, Colin's saying regarding the uh, the, the the pots on the uh, HH Telecaster, everything got changed. Uh, pots, born 500k, new wiring loom, and Rock Grigsby switch, and solderless. Um, yes. Do, I, if I can just tell you, I, I don't, because I've been tinkering with um electronics since i was well that tall um since i was a kid um i got into cb radio when i was a kid and then from there i got into amateur radio and then from amateur radio got into um you know like being a radio ham went to uh, college to learn how to be a merchant navy radio officer and if if my career plan had gone according to plan i would have been seeing the world you know working uh <laughs> working for Cunard or something like that, which, which reminds me of a joke. It's like the, the bloke, bloke uh, turn, pulls up in a Rolls Royce at the um, at the docks, and one of the dockers asks him, he says, uh, excuse me, uh, do you mind asking me, do you mind me asking how you got a Rolls Royce? He says, I work for Cunard. He says, well, I work hard as well, pal, but there's no need to swear. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I would have been doing if... Um, you know, if, if if my career had gone according to plan. So I've been soldering a long time. It's not the soldering that um, that I find tedious. The thing that I can never do properly is strip wires, okay? And the worst ones are those cloth braided wires. I absolutely, they're a pain in the neck to strip those. Um, wire strippers never seem to want to work for me. I always have to kind of either do it with my teeth or you kind of very gingerly go around it with a Stanley blade or something like that. I never, ever seem to be able to strip wires. Um, so it's not the soldering that's the, that, that's the pain in the neck for me. It's it's the bit that you do before the soldering that I always struggle with. Uh, funny how life goes on, isn't it? Oh, we've got Rex Rexomatic. How are you, Rex? Um, Nancy Davis is saying, John, have you had COVID yet? If so, how was it? Uh, yes, I have. And I caught it when I was in hospital having me cancer treatment. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, how was it? It was not a particularly um, bad sniffle and nothing more. That's it. I was, I, I still kept on 
uh, working. I kept on. If I thought I'm going to keep, if if cancer didn't stop me working, then the um, then then a, a bit of a sniffle isn't going to. I wouldn't have known it was anything more than just a sniffle if I hadn't had the positive test. So there you go. It's um, it was just nothing to. It, it didn't it didn't stop me in my tracks. I just kind of carried on through. You know, kind of. Uh, hot toddies and um you know plenty of sleep and i was i was all right but I, to be honest i've had worse colds um oh colin saying uh, oh i can solve it just not in my flat with a gazillion uber sensitive smoke alarms yes smoke alarms that would you not think in an in an era in an epoch when we can send you know, kind of robot missions to Mars to gather soil samples and do chemistry analysis on them and all that sort of stuff. You know, would you would you not think that it would not be beyond the 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 wit and wisdom of, of science to produce a smoke alarm that can tell the difference between a pan of bacon frying and a house burning down? You know, it would be nice if they could calibrate them so they could tell the damn difference um yes that that is something of a of a hobby horse of mine so uh where are we uh chip young is saying i think the idea with the cloth ones is you just push them back per a pair of good uh, strippers ahem, for the plastic coated ones. Yeah, I've never been. I've never got the knack of being able to push that uh, braided wire back. Um, it's it. It never seems to work for me. But there you go. Um, uh, let's see what else we've got going on in the chat. Um, hot toddies are a universal panacea. Yes, indeed. I used to get them when I was a kid. Um, you know. <laughs> My mother used to, well, like, I don't know, 10 years old, my mother would say, there's a hot toddy, go and drink that. I haven't got a cold. Yes, you have. Go and drink that hot toddy. And then within half an hour, I'd be very quiet. And, you know, she could watch Coronation Street in peace. But, um, uh, where are we? Let's see what else we got. Uh, Grolsch beer comes with free strap locks. Indeed, it does. Well, that's if you can get the bottles anymore. Every time I see Grolsch these days, it's in a can. Um, I, I can't remember the last time I saw Grolsch beer in a bottle. Um, it's always it always seems to be canned these days. And um, so there you go. Um, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Cylon Hybrid is saying. I got a gladi with the intention of taking it apart. They're a great learning guitar. Um, you know, the the one thing I have yet to do. Let me let me take you on a little tour, actually, because um, nowadays I now have, as you can see over there, a workbench, and there's that um, gold top that uh, Balder kindly uh, sent me. That is going to a good home sometime soon. Um, but yeah, I've now got a workbench over there in the corner, and uh, the the little uh, the, the picture there is uh, of uh, one of our previous dogs, uh, border collie called Cassie. There's my some of my guitars over there. There's some more of them uh, over there, and um, so on. Oh, and there's the bag full of beer there. Um, yeah, but now I've got a workbench in here. There's going to be um, some more. Um, kind of guitar maintenance themed videos uh, coming up on the channel and I got a glary uh, oh you, you probably saw the videos where I was modding it and stuff um, specifically to do you know to learn how to do mods on and one of the things I did do on that on that guitar which turned out really well actually was converted from a top loader to through body stringing um, anyone tells you you need um a drill press to be able to drill through a guitar you can do it without one because i've done it um you just have to have a very steady hand and drill halfway through from either side and you can get it reasonably um you know kind of were the, the holes perfectly straight no they weren't but they weren't you know kind of you know in a zigzag pattern either um 
So, you know, I, w I was going to do a refret on that guitar because that's the one bit of guitar maintenance that I have no experience of doing. I can crown and level frets. I can do all the kind of electronics work as long as I don't have to strip too many ways. Um, you know, I can basically sort the guitar out pretty much in, in any way because I've, I've learned through experience how to do it over the years. But the one thing I've never, ever done is a refret. So there might be a refretting video coming up at some point. I might get a, um, might remember when Phil McKnight got that Glarry Strat and, um, you know, put stainless steel frets in it and stuff like that. I might just do some sort of project like that, um, you know, in my spare time, because <laughs> I have plenty of that. Um, where are we? Uh, Danny Hancock saying, um, uh, move the camera up. Well, from where I'm looking, my head is in shot. So, I mean, do you want it uh, like that? Is, is that better? Um, let's have a look. Um, yeah, Craig. Um, it's great fun modding guitars. I'd love to build one. I need to book a Crimson guitar course. Yeah, this, that, that's on my bucket list as well. Um, you know, it's... Uh, the, the thing is, me and the missus haven't had a holiday since 2015. We've not been away at all. Um, you know, just life hasn't um, permitted it. Um, so if I was to say, <laughs> I was to say, you know, we haven't been on holiday for seven years. Well, I'm going away on a on a guitar building course. Um, I think when I got back, me bags would be packed on the doorstep. So um, at some point, I'd like to do it. But you know, we'll, it, it would be nice to just get away with the missus for a few days first. Um, uh, Jay Aoyong is saying do document the process of refret um, uh, Michael Broadhead uh, saying do you have any love for the Explorer style of guitar the Lizzie Hill signature is beautiful I do quite like uh, yeah I do quite like Explorers um, you know, they've just got, the, the, you know, they are, do you know what I mean by this? They are like the, the sort of past's idea of what the future looks like. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's when you see things from yesteryear, when they were trying to sort of extrapolate and wonder what the future would look like. That is what an explorer looks like to me. And, um, I, I've never had one. I've never, I've played one, um, just... I was playing some some gig years ago where there were a number of bands on the bill and one of the other guitar players had an Explorer and we were just kind of chatting in the dressing room and um, playing each other's guitars. And I, I like the sort of armrest function of it. You know, it's one of the things I often talk about, about what I love about Telecasters, I'm just going to have to point the camera down here, is the fact that you've got this this edge here, which is like a perch, that you can sit on with, with with your arm like that. And I find that, unlike many people who find that, that kind of hard edge there very uncomfortable, I find it really super comfortable. Um, and an Explorer is very much, I get that sort of same vibe from an Explorer. Uh, let's just get the camera back up there. There we go. Um, so, no, th th there may be an Explorer uh, coming soon. Um Ian Clark is saying, take the missus on the course. You'll need help sweeping the sawdust. Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 um, I'll tell that to her. I'll, I'll say that, but I'll, I'll just I'll just do it on the inside. I'll just keep that because, <laughs> yes, indeed, she'll set the dog on me. Um, so, anyway, yes, Explorer guitars. Um <sighs> It's, I haven't had one, I've, I don't have one, I've never owned one, and um, yeah, we, we'll see, watch this space. Anyway, excuse me chaps, my glass needs refilling, or at least it does now. Um, James White is saying, let me put you up on screen James. Um that I can read it easier. Uh, I'm thinking of getting some new humbuckers for my Revstar 820 and uh, looking at Iron Gear. Rewatch your uh, reviews for both Blues Engine and the Tesla Sharks. Uh, 
Do you have an overall preference? Yep, I do. I prefer the Tesla Sharks. Um, in light of the fact that um, I really do, I think I prefer Alnico 2 magnets. Um, they just, to me, in humbucker or single coil form, because um, I've got Alnico 2s in this guitar now. Uh, torn rider alnico twos um I, I just i just think alnico twos are a sweeter sound um the uh, the blues engines are alnico four i think uh which is not that common a, a magnet uh, to find and i did find those to be an improvement over the alnico fives uh that were in the uh roswell pickups that were in that harley benton guitar that i think you're referring to from the blues engine pickups um but you know it's just alnico 2 for me is is what it's all about i love i mean and let, let's have another gratuitous guitar shot i the pickups in this um i believe are alnico 2 this is me les paul tribute um i think these are the 490 uh 490 490t and 490r pickups i believe and I th i'm pretty sure these are alnico 2 and this is the, the the sweetest sounding les paul um this guitar has a superpower by the way this les paul tribute um it is it, capable of annoying the most number of people because all of the gibson haters hate it because it's a gibson and all of the gibson purists hate it because it's not a real les paul you know it's it's the poor man's les paul it's my les paul and i love it um but um yeah I, I, I do like the um the Alnico two uh, magnets in, in those. So from the um between the what, what we're saying, the uh, the blues engines and the Tesla Sharks, I would go for the Tesla Sharks all day long. Um uh, Ian Checkley is saying, Hi John, is there any issue you think with cutting the cables on a three three five style on a three five five style guitar, and just soldering new pots with the old cable in. Uh, not at all, mate. Uh, it is a bodge job. Uh, you know, technically, you know, you should. But changing any kind of wiring on a thin line semi acoustic is just it's keyhole surgery, isn't it? Um, it it's it's like trying to eat soup with a fork, and you know, design flaw. Really, just put a back plate on the damn thing so there's so there's access. Um, but um, no, I mean, I had a Harley Benton HB thirty five a, a while ago, uh, black semi acoustic guitar, and um, I I wasn't that keen on the pickups that were in it, and, and in the end, I just thought it's easier to lift the pickups out leave them connected and take the pickups apart and put alnico magnets in rather than the, the whole kind of faffing around with tweezers and and all the rest of it that you've got to do to to access things through the f holes um so no i mean it's certainly it's 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 how i would do it uh but then again i'm a big kind of <laughs> fat ball hairy ass bloke who um who will who will bodge things but you know what it'll work um so it's not the way that any reputable guitar tech will tell you to do it but it will work and it saves a lot of grief so yeah um there you go um Let's have a look, uh, see what we got uh, in the chat. Um, is there any chance at all you would do an acoustic guitar video? I really love the sound, and I believe that I'm not alone, strumming our finger. Yeah, well, um, for many, many years, I didn't own an acoustic guitar. And then um, I bought that Harley Benton there. And there's one of my students who's bought another Harley Benton um, acoustic guitar. And 
it may, I mean, that one sounds okay. It, it's okay for sort of background texture in, um, you know, in, in, in a track and everything, but it's not a guitar that sounds realistically, you know, kind of that good on its own. But this guitar that uh, Rose, my student, has, has got, is it's again, it's a Harley Benton. Um, and I think it's probably the next model up from that. And it sounds absolutely gorgeous and really, really resonant, lovely sounding guitar. Um, so there may be another acoustic on the horizon at some point. Uh, Pete Moulton, why don't they put a rear plate on thin lines to make accessing controls easier to, to service or replace? Well, it's because Gibson don't do it that way because Gibson are all about history and tradition. And it's a case of, well, we've never done it that way. So we're never going to do it that way. Um, and then, you know, other companies that copy Gibson think, well, we'll just copy what Gibson does. Um, it would be such a simple innovation to do. Um, there's that uh, Harley Benton again, uh, thin line semi. The um, is it the aerial or aero or something like that? Um, Edwin Toonan's got one. He'll be able to correct me in the chat. Um, that does have the back plate, and you know it just makes it so much easier it's uh, to be honest with you it's it's another reason i love telecasters because you know two screws and you've got access to everything it's even easier than a strat the, the, kind of doing wiring on a strat style guitar there's anybody else like me it's like you you get it all wired up and then getting all the wires to the, to kind of sit in that little channel that can that goes between the three pickup routes um even if you've tie wrapped them together and everything, there's always one stray wire every time that just kind of says, no, I'm not going to sit in the channel. And, you know, you, so you, you know something's not fitting because it won't sit flush. But then it's, you know, you, it's it, that is always the, the, the most time-consuming part of working on a strap for me. Um, uh, wouldn't an access cover on a semi-acoustic affect the sound? I doubt it very much, mate. Um, but you know, it's it, it would be like a small area on the on the back of the guitar that uh, that has you know a, a, a removable plate on it. Um, um, Brendan Behan, um, respects and deepest sympathy on the death of Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, a well liked visitor to Ireland. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you so much, mate. Um, and uh, some sometimes dim, dim never thin. The tonewood experts would have kittens if a plastic plate was on the back of a 335. Indeed, they would, which is probably a good reason to do it. Uh, on the whole topic of tonewood, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, I think it's um, indicative of the way that the world has changed since the advent of social media and, and, and so on. Um, that, you know, you either think that tone wood is, is absolutely um, imperative and you can definitely hear the difference between mahogany and basswood and, you know, older and poplar and, or, or it makes no difference whatsoever. There's no middle ground, which is, is kind of where I am with it, to be honest with you. Um, do I think that there is a difference between this species of wood and that species of wood? Not really, to be honest with you. But then again, talking about 335s, you know, um, a Gibson 335 and a Gibson Les Paul have identical scale length, identical hardware, identical electronics, but yet they sound different. So the fact that one is made of mahogany and maple and the other is made of, uh, was it poplar and maple and fresh air? You know, they sound different. So something other than the electronics is having an impact on the tone. Um, that difference becomes largely negated when you crank the gain up and all you're hearing are the gain stages of the amplifier. But in its in, in a sort of low gain or clean setting, 
then something is making a difference and it can only be the density and amount and type of timber that is there and the fact that as i say one is um largely made of fresh air um well not largely but you know there's a big lump of fresh air in, inside a 335 so for me it makes some kind of difference but i wouldn't say that there's you know um a hard and fast difference between oh you can tell that a guitar made from uh, a telecaster made from alder or poplar sounds different from a telecaster made of pine or ash no it doesn't um frankly um it's you know telecaster is always going to sound like a telecaster frankly um michael purcell is saying isn't it the strings and pickups that provide the sound well yes it is but my hypothesis is this it's it's not just the the pickups that provide the sound on the strings it's the relative movement between the strings and the pickups so if the pickups are mounted into the guitar which they will be obviously and the guitar is vibrating then that vibration is going to be transferred into the pickups which is going to create a difference in the relative movement between the strings and the pickups and might be a small difference but you know in a lot of cases you can't hear that difference but in some cases as i said between a, like a 335 and a les paul you can hear the difference so you know i think basically it's a tiny difference that you know is that can get magnified basically anyway uh, let's uh, move on and say um, what are you saying there Craig uh, I'm more about how a guitar feels than the wood it's made from don't get me wrong but the wood sounds uh, the wood sounds different but the feel is the big thing for me when buying um, yeah I mean it, that leads into the whole the whole question of the feel thing um, a, a top loader telecaster tends to sound different to a string through telecaster is that because of the uh the you know the the, the kind of tension of the of because of the, the um you know the resonance of the of the strings um being passed into the body possibly but i just tend to find a string through telecaster feels a lot kind of stiffer and tighter so you dig in and play harder which i think is a big difference in in what makes the the difference between a top loader telecaster and a string through telecaster um david evans is saying doesn't a gretch white falcon have a pop-off plate on the back it might do mate um i've never actually uh played a gretch white falcon and gretch guitars are you know i don't know a lot about them but i do know that, that there's different iterations and incarnations of them over the years and they change um and evolve so perhaps some do and perhaps i don't know perhaps some do, don't um let's have a look um what are you saying uh funny you think you can buy a vegan guitar uh, says Balder. Yes, well, you can usually buy a vegan anything these days, can't you? Um, anyway, on the to on the topic of that, uh, in the Robson household this evening, we shall be feasting on doner kebab. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Jay Ao Young is saying, Gretsch, review of Gretsch. I've done two Gretsch reviews. Um, I did a, a review of I can't remember the the model number, but one of the um, one of the import style Gretches that was a big semi-acoustic kind of thing. Um, I did that, oh gosh, probably back in about 2019. And uh, more recently, I say recently, back in I think last year, 2021, I did um, a Gretsch Duo Jet, I think it was, uh, thanks to uh, one of my students who was in the chat tonight, Michael. Um, he loaned me that guitar. Michael's got another guitar coming up on the channel soon, by the way. A really rather nice PRS. Um, and he's told me when I review it, uh, I'm not allowed to mention a certain well-known, sadly now deceased, ostentatious American piano player. 
so I won't. <laughs> anyway, chaps, uh, 59, sec 59 minutes and 49, 50 seconds now. We're coming up to the uh, the full-time mark. I'm going to swig off the last of me beer. And as I say, we've got a kebab turning up shortly, so I'm going to go and uh, wait for that downstairs. I need to be downstairs because the wife's in her pyjamas and she won't answer the door to the delivery um, if I'm not there. Uh, so... Once again, thank you, everyone, for everything. You know what I'm saying. Thank you for turning up and having a be with me this uh, this rather sombre Friday. And um, I love to do it all again. So I'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me. But for now, time, gentlemen, please. <laughs>